Hi, I'm going to run through a question called Stan Cost Limited on standard costing and variance analysis that came from the specimen paper that was released prior to the current specification coming into play. So I'm going to be switching between PowerPoint and, uh, and Excel, but I wanted to just go through it. It is a 25 mark question, so it might be useful for future years. Um, particularly as far as the 2022 exams go, we do know that standard costing and variance analysis is coming up. Um, in section B. So although this is a 25 marker, it won't do any harm to run through how the variances have been calculated and talk about the interrelationship between the variances and how we can kind of evaluate what's happened. Because if you remember, we get 14 marks of computational um, work, which could be calculating all the variances. It could be reconciling um, a budgeted profit figure with an actual profit figure, or it could be reconciling a budgeted cost with an actual cost. So um, we'll have a little look at uh, how that works out. So um, yeah, I'm gonna go through the whole question um, with a few little extra tweaks. So I hope you enjoy it. Original question here, um, Stan Cost manufacture high quality wooden furniture for homes and offices. The company operates a standard costing system. So that's where they set the cost of the item in terms of raw materials and labor, direct labor in advance of production. and often will set the selling price as well at the same time. The managing director is very concerned that the actual profit for the month at 22,770 is significantly less than the budgeted profit of 90,000. Well, I think we could agree with that. So if that's just for one month, you start multiplying that up by 12. Um, if we have a repeat next month, then this is gonna become quite a problem. Um, the cost accountant has given us some information. So they told us about the budget here. So the plan is to make 800 tables per month and to sell them for 650 pounds. The actual number of tables made and sold was 860 um, and the price was 600 pounds per table. So we can see here that they've, it looks like they've reduced the selling price, but they've actually increased the demand there. In terms of materials, the standard quantity for one table per table is 25 meters and that costs five pounds 50 a meter. So that's the standard price for the raw materials. And the actual situation was that each table took 35 meters and the actual cost was four pounds 50. So we can see here that every table we've made, we've wasted or used 10 meters more than the standard. Um, and for every meter of material we've purchased, we've paid one pound less than the standard amount. So it could be that we've, uh, we've paid less because the quality is not as good and that's why we've wasted more. But we'll talk more about the interrelationship of the variances in a little while. Um, in terms of labor, it should take the budget. The standard was 15 hours per table. Okay, 20 pounds an hour is the standard rate. Um, and then the actual results achieved were 19 hours per table. So that was the actual um, number of hours used per table and the rate paid, the actual rate was 17 pounds an hour. Now be careful when they give you the information like this, Remember that the fact that they plan to make and sell 800 tables is only any use when we're trying to work out the sales volume variance. It isn't any use trying to base standard quantity of materials or standard hours on the 800 tables. Okay, everything needs to be flexed. So when we're working out standard quantity for materials, it needs to be based on 860 tables and the standard hours needs to be the 15 hours times the number of tables actually made. So just a word of warning there. Now, the cost accountant very kindly has calculated the re relevant variances for us. Now, I'm actually going to go through showing you the formulas so you can see where these have come from, because I think it's quite useful practice. Um, and it's also important to understand where the numbers have come from if we're going to have any sort of reasonable attempt at trying to explain them um, and suggest some reasons for the variances. So we can see that the price variance is adverse. It's £43,000 adverse, and that's because our customers were paying £50 per table less than the standard. The volume though is favorable and we can see there that's because we plan to sell 800 tables, we actually sold 860. The materials price was favorable because we paid one pound per meter less than the standard for our raw materials. The usage variance um, was adverse, so we wasted more materials. We planned to allow 25 meters per table, we actually ended up using 35 meters per table. Um, the labor rate was favorable 49020 and that's because we planned to pay 20 pounds an hour and actually only paid 17 pounds an hour and then the labor efficiency 68800 
we planned for them to take 15 hours to make a table and they actually took 19 hours. So that's how we've ended up with the adverse efficiency variance. So hopefully that's just given you an overview. As I said, I now want to just go through um, those calculations, or I will do in a little while when we've read the rest of the, uh, the question. Um, so it says that the managers of the relevant departments have seen the figures above and have made some initial comments. The manager responsible for sales tells us that the price variance was the result of having to lower the price because of increased competition. The manager who's responsible for materials says the price variance was the result of negotiating a much better deal with a new supplier, so potentially bigger discounts. The manager responsible for labour says we have followed other companies in the industry and employed workers on zero hour contracts and this has reduced our wage bill. Um, and the managing director believes that the managers may have been covering for each other and the reasons given are not the real causes of the variances, but have been caused internally. So, a bit of shade here, the um, MD doesn't believe what these managers are saying. And this quite often happens, this is one of the issues with standard costing um, and calculating variances, is that often a decision made, for example, by your um, purchasing department will have a knock-on effect with all the other um, Department. So if you buy poor quality materials, then the poor person that's in charge of the, uh, the production line is then carrying the can for that. We can now calculate the variances. Um, it's a little table that I've drawn up earlier. So the sales price variance, remember with sales and um, or sales price and sales volume variances, if you get a negative in your calculator, when you're doing cost variances, that means it's adverse. But with sales, it's the other way around. So if you get a negative in your calculator, it's because the figure was higher. So that's bad when it's cost, but it's good when it's sales. It's good when the price is higher or the volume of sales is higher. So if we still remember the, um, the formula, because remember, these two are the same as for the materials variances. So it seems a shame to, to try and, you know mess those up now. Um, so st standard price minus actual price, the standard price 650 minus the actual price 600. So we've sold them for less, 50 pounds less times 860 gives us a 43,000 pound adverse variance because the tables were sold for 50 pounds less than the budgeted price. So that's your basic reason. The volume variance, um, we plan to sell 800. We did sell 860. Remember, that's the only variance that includes the um, planned level of sales. None of the other variances will feature 800 anywhere in the, the calculations, not in the flexing, not in any of it. Um, so 800 minus 860 times the standard price, which was 650, we used it up there, gives us a £39,000 favourable variance. And that's because we sold 60 more tables than we budgeted to. So that's the basic reason there. Materials price, we paid a pound more. I'm um, oh, sorry, we paid a pound less. So the standard price was 550 and the actual price was 450. So for each of these 30,100 meters, we've saved a pound. That gives us a favorable variance. Okay, and the basic reason paid one pound per meter less for materials than budget. Um, the usage variance, though, was the other way around. We should have used 21,500 to make 860 tables. We actually used 30,100. That's the figure we used up here, the actual quantity. And each one of those cost us £5.50. Um, or was planned to cost us, yeah, the standard price for that was £5.50. So we've got an adverse variance there, 47,300. And that's because we used 8,600 metres. That's the difference between these two metres more of material than we budgeted for. The labour rate variance, standard rate minus actual rate. Standard rate was twenty pounds. Actual rate seventeen times the sixteen three four hour. Sorry, sixteen three four zero hours. So that gives us a forty nine thousand and twenty pounds favourable variance, and that's come about because we paid them three pounds an hour less than the standard rate for every one of those sixteen thousand three hundred and forty hours. They worked um, and it doesn't look as though they were happy with that because the efficiency variance should have taken them 12,900 hours, actually took them 16,340 hours, same figure there, um, times the standard rate of £20 an hour means that we've got an adverse variance of 68,800. So that's because the workers took 3,440 hours more than the standard. Okay. So what was the question after all of that? We had to assess the significance of the variances on the performance of the business. Are they significant? Ask yourself that question. I would say so. Overall, the profit is down by 67 to 30. 
Sales variance overall is 4,000 adverse. The materials variance, 17,200 adverse. This is when we offset um, for the sales variance, it's price and volume offset against each other. With materials, it's the, um, the price and the usage offset gives us 17,200 adverse. And the labor variance, if we offset the price, sorry, the rate and the efficiency, we get an adverse of 19,780. So all of those I think are pretty significant. Um, we can reconcile the budget and the actual profit. Now, this is something you're often asked to do. So do a reconciliation either from profit to actual profit, budgeted profit to actual profit, or budgeted cost to actual cost. If we do budgeted profit down to actual profit, then we need to remember that an adverse variance will reduce our profit, whereas a favourable variance will increase it. If we're asked to do it the other way around, if we were starting here with the budgeted cost, then an adverse variance would be added because it would increase the cost, whereas a favourable variance would be deducted because it reduces it. So just make sure you know which way around you're going. Are you starting with actual going back to budget? Unlikely. Generally, you're going to start with the budget and uh, end up with the actual figure. One other thing to be aware of is we can generally sort of just sling all of the variances in, but we need to be really careful with the sales volume variance. So the price variance, I mean, that's fine. That's going to um, impact on our profit. In this case, it's adverse because we've charged £50 per table less than the budget. But when it comes to the volume variance, we can't just chuck in the full selling price there and multiply it by the extra 60 tables. All we're going to get added to our profit is 60 tables times by the additional contribution. Now the contribution, um, I haven't got a detailed working of it here, but you can calculate that by working out what the cost is per table, deducting that from the selling price. This is all from the budgeted figures. So if you start with the, um, the budgeted selling price and then deduct the budgeted cost, so the materials, the um, standard amount that you're gonna pay per meter times the number of meters, the standard number of meters, do the same for labor, standard rate times the standard hours per table. One away from the other should leave you 21250 times that by 60. That's the additional contribution you're going to get. So just don't whack in the uh, the full selling price times 60. You won't get it to reconcile. Um, the materials price variance was favourable. So that's going to increase our profit. Um, usage variance, though, was adverse. That will decrease profit. The labour rate, favourable. That will increase profit. And the labour efficiency, will reduce profit. So overall, our profit, as we discussed before, is going down by 67.230. Um, if you're trying to look at the mark scheme, if you do stumble across a copy of the mark scheme, there is a typo. They put in 68,000, which doesn't really help um, in their reconciliation. It should be 68,800 if you want to check back on the previous slides. Um, but anyway, after all of this, our actual profit is down to the 22,770. So you can check my workings um, in your own time. So the other part of this was to assess the MD's view that the variances are caused internally. So we need to think about reasons for the variances. We were told of some possibilities. So the price variance was favourable. Is that because we bought poor quality materials? So they were saying it was due to discount. Uh, but could it be more likely that uh, it was because we bought poor quality materials? And just be very wary of chucking in the same reasons here at this point as they've already given you, because the MD doesn't believe those reasons, we need to try and think of some others. Um, the materials uses was, was adverse, so was that down to the poor quality materials causing more wastage? There could be an interrelationship there between those two. The labour rate was favourable. Um, did they employ cheaper, less skilled workers? Or was there a glut of uh, suitably skilled workers? Um, labour efficiency was adverse, so maybe the less skilled workers took longer and all the low pay, demotivated staff they didn't work as efficiently as they might otherwise. Um, and then interrelationship between the variances. So did the cheaper poor quality materials have a knock on effect, cause the waste of materials and also the waste of time? Remember, everything that ends up in the skip at the end of the production line is not only a waste of materials, it's a waste of any time that's been spent working on those materials. So it all ends up as a negative, as an adverse variance. Uh, maybe the staff were inexperienced, poorly trained, and they wasted time and materials. Maybe the materials were fine. It was the fault of the staff. Maybe there was something completely unrelated. Maybe the machinery was faulty, and that led to wasting materials and time. These are all internal issues, and all we're doing here is just guessing at some you know, fairly standard um, reasons why the variances may have occurred. 
Um, the sales variances, um, maybe there was a reduction in price to match or undercut competitors' prices. Um, maybe the sales volume, the lower price drove up demand. Um, maybe the price of the product was of a lower quality. So due to cheap materials and unskilled workforce. So maybe we had to reduce the price um, because the materials were inferior um, and the quality of our product wasn't as good as it usually is. Okay, so all of those are internal factors. We ought to think about some um, external factors. So could it be that there was a glut of raw materials and that's reduced the market price? Um, maybe there was a lack of skilled workers available, perhaps Brexit was to blame for that one. Um, sales, maybe there was increased competition from abroad. Okay, now there are some limitations. There are always limitations to find in this question. Um, I think really we need more information to confirm the reasons for the cause of the variance. All we're doing here is taking a little shot in the dark really at what the causes might be. We don't really know. Um, do we know whether the standard was set correctly or is that out of date? Because obviously if you're using an incorrectly set or an out of date standard, all of your variances are going to be significant. Um, there's no right or wrong answer with this one. Yes, um, you can say yes that the MD is right, no, the MD is not right, or you could say that there's not enough information in order to make an informed judgment. So um, hopefully you've enjoyed watching this video. Um, please remember to uh, like and subscribe and uh, see you again soon.